12 psychology class. Welcome to a brand new unit. This is unit two, as you can see uh, from below me down here and chapter two with the title. I apologize for the strange lighting. It's extremely sunny outside and this is the best I could do with my blinds. So you'll, maybe you'll get to watch it move across me uh, throughout the lecture. But uh, the first lesson, or the first, this unit, sorry, is about all about how your mind and your body uh, are connected physically. So we're going to talk about neurons or your nerves, your brain, and then some interesting things about those as well. Uh, there are four lessons, I believe, in this unit currently. Uh, might become more eventually, but currently there are four. And as usual, you'll see the lesson title below me and the key points uh, above me as well as our logo and our class. These are the same style of slide, but it is blue. So make sure you're on the correct um, set of lessons as you're doing this unit. The first lesson is about neurons or individual nerves, essentially. Um, when we talk about nerves, sometimes it's a bundle of neurons or a bunch of neurons put together. Uh, but we're going to talk specifically about what neurons are. So let's do it. The nervous system. Uh, the nervous system is never at rest. There is always a job for it to do, and it works alongside you during the most demanding parts of your day. So no matter what you're doing, uh, you are always using your brain. Even if you're just kind of sitting around daydreaming, that's actually the only thing you're using is your brain. Uh, so it is always doing something, even when you're sleeping. Uh, the nervous system, even when you're sleeping, is busy regulating your body functions, whether that be your heart rate, your breathing rate, your temperature, um, you know, being a little bit on edge so that you, if, if there is danger, you can wake up. Uh, it is always doing something. Uh, the nervous system, or your essentially your brain, controls your emotions, movements, thinking, behavior, any other word you could use to describe what you do, um, your brain or your nervous system controls it. So structurally, in terms of how your nervous system is set up, we divide it into two parts. Uh, the first is the central nervous system, or the CNS, and that's key point one, uh, or the first half of it anyway. And then the other part is the peripheral nervous system, or the PNS. So the central nervous system is the brain and the spinal cord. So the brain and the spinal cord is your central nervous system, your CNS. And then all of the little branches that come off of it, you might have heard them referred to as like T1 and T2, L3, uh, C5. Uh, those are all vertebrae, which have nerves coming off of them uh, from the central nervous system. So the small branches of nerves from the spinal cord are the peripheral nervous system. So structurally or physically, it's divided into two parts, brain and spinal cord together, and then all your other nerves that go all the way to your fingers and toes and liver and heart and all those other things. Uh, that is the peripheral nervous system. The nerves of the PNS or the peripheral nervous system conduct information from the organs like your heart, your stomach, to the central nervous system and take the information back to the organs when you have um, you know, a signal from your brain. These nerves branch out from the spinal column or the CNS and when they branch out they're about as thick as a pencil or you know your pinky finger possibly and those in the extremities or down in your pinky fingers are very very small so they're almost invisible uh, every single little bit of your finger has a neuron or a nerve that that goes to it so they, they branch off and they get very very small and they have many um, different specific jobs whether that be like temperature or um, pointy pressure or thick pressure if you move on in biology and psychology um, they focus a lot about nerves and, and touch. Uh, it's very important. Senses overall. So nerves start out as, about as thick as a pencil and then branch off to get very, very small. Uh, messages to and from the brain travel along the nerves, 
which are strings of long, thin cells called neurons. So when you send a message from your finger to your brain, it travels along nerves, but more specifically, uh, the are long strings of cells called neurons. And I'm going to show you pictures of them in a bit here. The signal travels down the neuron much as a flame travels along a firecracker fuse. So it sends the message down the neuron. Uh, your neuron, however, can send hundreds of messages in a minute instead of just being used up in one firecracker fuse. Um, so messages travel down neurons and it kind of fires like a firecracker does. A neuron is triggered when it is stimulated past a, th a certain threshold. So we call this the all or none principle. The neuron either sends the message or it does not send the message. There's no half messages. So in this diagram below, and I believe you have it in your booklet, there is um, the stimulus strength. So this is the weakest stimulus down here. And as we get stronger, 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 we go up. Now you can see that if this is the threshold, this dotted line, there is no response until it hits that threshold. As soon as it hits that threshold, there is a full response. This is the all, and this is the nothing. It either fires or it does not. So your neurons either send a message or they do not send a message. The neurons have four basic parts. Um, so here is a neuron. This is actually kind of like two neurons. So right here we have one neuron and then we have it connected to another one down here. So we're gonna talk about dendrites and the cell body first. So up here is the dendrites and then the cell body is this big part. So dendrites are really short thin fibers that protrude from the cell body and they are what receive messages. So that'd be the most important part. Dendrites receive information from other neurons. So they are um, the receivers of the shipping and receiving. Then they bring the information into the cell body. So the cell body integrates the signals from all of the dendrites, because there's a whole bunch of them, and decides whether or not to send the information along. So you can see how there's a whole bunch of dendrites here they all are receiving information from different neurons. And that information is uh, interpreted in the cell body and then can, pardon me, can be sent down this strand here. So the cell body integrates the signals from the other cells and decides whether or not to fire. It's an all or none principle here. It either fires or it doesn't. And in the, the dendrites receive the information. So there's two parts of the neuron. The next parts are the axon, which is this part right here, and then the axon terminal. Uh, you'll also notice this myelin sheath. You're going to do a little bit of research on what this is later, uh, but I will mention it uh, as well. So the axon here and then the uh, axon terminal is this little end. And you can see how the little end is attached to a different cell's dendrite. You can see the dendrite for the other cell here the axon terminal is pretty much attached to it. So an axon, uh, axons reach to different areas of the body to send the message along to other neurons or to their final destination. Some neurons can stretch several feet, so they are very long and thin. Uh, axons essentially um, are so thin, they're just like very tiny strands and the information travels along it very fast. So the axon is what, where the information is sent to, and then the axon terminals branch out at the end to connect to dendrites to pass the information along. So whether that be you know, into your brain or to the spinal cord, they need to connect to another neuron so they can pass that information through. So that's what happens at the axon terminals. Uh, so the axon is the string and then the axon terminal at the end is what passes the information to the next neuron. These myelin sheaths here, they are what speed up uh, the, uh, the information. If they didn't have it, it would be um, slow and not consistent. So myelin sheath is very important. And then, yes, so we're to the your job section. There is 
three terms for you to uh, look up and define. And if you have any questions about those, please let me know. Regulate, voluntary, and spine. And then there's the myelin sheath research, as I had mentioned. Uh, thanks so much for watching, everyone. If you have any questions, please let me know. But I will see you in class. Thanks.